All right, good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So welcome to Southwire Solutions University Virtual Training Live. Uh, my name is Beth and I am the SSU training coordinator and your host today. And we wanna go ahead and welcome our YouTube audience. We're streaming live to YouTube. Uh, today, we are continuing a series called uh, Where, When, Why, and How. And today's focus is Parallel and Stack. And your software expert that's gonna tell you all about it is Mr. Johnny Sellers. And then we have a panel for you today where you can ask questions. We have Ms. Christy Phillips, she's training center manager. Um, we have Bill Fowler, who is a senior training instructor, and we have Joe Fawcett, who's our training instructor out at SSU West. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, this training is being recorded, and you'll receive a link to it um, after, the, uh, after the class. So with that, we're going to go ahead and dive in, and I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Johnny Sellers. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate the introduction there, and <clears throat> thanks, everyone, for joining, folks out there on YouTube. Uh, as Elizabeth said, we're going to we're going to kind of dive into a little piece of what we do with Southwire Solutions uh, as our company. You know, we have everything that works together as a whole. So we're going to dive in on a little piece called Parallels and Stacks. Now, this may be a bit redundant to some of you folks out there that's uh, that 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 uh, are maybe maybe already doing Parallels and Stacks, but uh, we may be some things that we can share with you today that may uh, allow you to even uh, improve what you're doing with it. So that's our goal today. All right. So I'm going to turn off my I already have. I'll stop my video because uh, uh, give me a little extra bandwidth so we don't have any issues here. So uh, let's go ahead and move forward and get my clicker to work here. Here we go. Parallels and stacks. All right, simple solutions. You've, you've probably heard about Southwire Simple Solutions. So our solutions is really a, a group of things that all work together to produce very uh, uh, efficient job sites, very safe job sites. And to be able to do these wire pulls with a whole lot less effort and a whole lot less time and, and gosh, just keeping everybody safe and going home in one piece and no back injuries and, and that kind of thing. If you look back uh, years ago, the way electricians used to do it, you know, I'm an electrician by, uh, I've been in electrical world my whole life, but I remember the days of black reels of wire, individual spools and having to handle all these reels, very, very difficult. So we're fast forwarding today with parallels and stacks. We're going to change that dynamic. One of the things that enables us to do these things so effectively is, as you'll see here, we say, uh, stop, don't lube. Our south wire, simple wire, does not require a drop of lube. This is the enabler that lets us make these pulls faster and safer and easier. Okay, so parallel and stack reels. So let's talk just for a moment about what it is. Uh, parallel means we simply take the phase conductors, you know, A, B, C, which is, you know, your black, red, blue, your brown, orange, yellow, whatever you may have. And instead of having separate reels of black wire, we're going to parallel those conductors together and use colored conductors and put it on one reel. So what that does, it reduces the number of reels you, you have on the job. So we're going to have colored parallel conductors. Uh, and that's pretty standard now. Uh, and people say, well, colored wire, does it cost more than black wire? Answer is no. Color wire costs exactly the same as black wire. So people say, why do y'all still make black wire? Well, people still buy it, so we still make it. But pretty much the world has moved over to colored conductors, and it solves all those problems about uh, cross-phasing when you're terminating and all those things in the field. So we're going to use colored parallel conductors. We're going to parallel them on a reel. But one of the things you may not be aware of when we say stacking, what is stacking? It means we're going to put multiple feeders on one reel, okay? They can be different lengths, different sizes. We're going to put simple pulling heads on them. They're going to be clearly labeled. You decide the order that you want to pull these circuits off that reel. It dramatically reduces the number of reels, and we're going to do a little sample of that here in a minute. It's less material handling, less reels to move around, much safer, tremendously less time to install, and you're, you're increasing your profits. So let's play a little video here that shows what a parallel stack reel looks like. Revolutionary simple stack reel combines multiple pools on one single reel. Each circuit is cut to length with pre-installed staggered pulling grips in a protective covering separated with shrink wrap between each individual circuit. Each circuit is clearly labeled for accurate identification. All circuits are identified on one label for accurate delivery to the pool site. 
On exterior pulls, the simple truck can pull right up to the site. You just hook the rope to the pulling grips with a clevis and start your pull. All right, so I hope that made sense to you. <clears throat> so you think about that. We took multiple circuits and put on the same reel. And that video there was an example of, we call that a simple truck. It's an example of on outdoor pulls, you, you put these reels on a truck and literally pull up next to your transformer or whatever, and you're pulling multiple pulls off of one reel, uh, multiple circuits. Had a class we did for a contractor here recently, and I asked who's been using stacked reels, and several of them ha had already. And I asked, what's the most what's the most number of circuits you've ever put on a reel? And one of the one of the foremen there said, I put 17 circuits on one reel once. And he said, I said, how'd that work? And he said, great. Set it up in front of the MCC in that electrical room and boom, 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 pulled out all these all these feeders off one reel. So imagine that, 17 feeders all on one reel. If you did that the old way, you'd been handling multiple reels. So that's the advantage of paralleling and stacking. And in this example, and today we're going to be looking at wooden reels, but we also have our sim reel. You can stack and parallel on that as well. If you look at reducing cost and improving safety, here's a little example we, we, we show quite a bit of, of what this ends up looking like. Here you've got a some feeders. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five feeders, parallel feeders. First one's a 400 amp pool, 350 feet long. Second one's a 200 amp pool, 235 feet long. These two are, these last two are 100 amp pools, 240 and 250 feet. So you see here in stacking, not only can we stack different lengths, we can do different sizes, even different colors on the same reel, okay? Now, if you look at these five feeders here, and if we did this a traditional way on the left over here, look at the number of reels. You could have 15 plus reels that you'd have to manage. You've got all these jack stands to have to put out in the field. You've got pallet jacks. You've got all these things it takes to get set up, and you're probably gonna use five to seven electricians doing that. If you think about that, that's a long process setting up all those reels. Compared to paralleling and stacking, and in this example here, we've paralleled and stacked on our simple reel, right? So all those feeders are on one reel. So I can roll that reel right up to my panel board, get it right in the electrical room, and make that pull. So think about the difference in the labor savings and the safety improvements by having one reel, one time, instead of 15 plus reels and all the other stuff that goes along with that. So you begin to see pretty quick, it makes sense to parallel and stack. Now I'll tell you this, you got to think about parallel and stacking at the front of your job. If you get halfway through your job and you got your, your pipe in the air and you're calling up your distributor and saying, hey, uh, send me this wire sliced and diced and get it to me tomorrow. You know, that's not a very good plan, is it? So when you start your project at the beginning in your pre-construction stage, and for those of you who are in sales out there, Work with your contractor at the pre-construction stage to say, look, let's take a look at the feeders in this project. Let's see, let's take an electrical room. What feeders leave that switch gear and go somewhere else to another panel on that project? Where are your motors you're feeding? Where are your motor control centers? Let's take your estimated lengths. Sure, you don't have your pipe run yet, but that's okay. Let's use your estimated lengths. Let's build these reels. So now you've got your plan done on the front end of the job. You've used your estimated lengths. Once you get your conduit installed and you get your actual measurements, no problem. Just adjust your lengths on your estimated lengths, and now you're ready to order that reel. And what you've accomplished is the plan's made. You know what you're going to be doing on the job site. Your distributor understands what's got to be coming to you and when, so he or she can make sure they've got the inventory and everything you need when you need it, so you're not surprised and they don't have the wire you need. So make that plan early. So when we build these reels and they're paralleled and stacked, they get bigger and heavier, and there's a lot of ways that we have to handle these uh, reels. But when we do that, we reduce that material handling, we increase that safety, we don't have back injuries and injuries. The schedule gets improved instead of maybe a week to do pulls, you can do it in a day. Uh, instead of a week with five or six people, you do it in a day with two people. That's huge. That turns, that, that, that turns directly into bottom line profits and reduced schedule. So these parallel reels, 
as you see here, they come out, they're shrink wrap. You've got arrows, directional arrows, so you don't have to guess at which way to position this reel. You'll know which way the heads are installed and how it's going to come off that reel for you. So you're able to, to set it up like you need to. When you build these reels, the circuit you put on that reel is going to be clearly labeled. You'll see exactly what is created and exactly what's that on that reel. You're going to know the order those feeders are in there. So you can make those decisions on what order you want to pull these circuits off that reel. So that's very, very important. And when you're ready to set up these reels, South Bar has a lot of ways to be able to handle these reels and to be able to pick these things up easily. In this case, this is one of our methods, one of many. This is our 6,000 pound rated quick jacks. So you see here in a parallel stack reel, it's a fairly heavy reel, but it's not any stress to put these jack stands on either side of the reel, run that axle through there. It's pinned in place. The axle's not going to jump off. And now instead of lifting with my back or my knees or uh, getting my fingers crushed or my toes crushed, I'm using the tool with the crank handle to simply raise that reel up off that cradle. The reel's going to be upright, not flopped on its side. You'll raise it up off the cradle just like that and level up your axle and you're ready to make those four or six eight twelve even 17 pulls off that one reel so i want to point out that when you do this you're going to know what the plan is the guys in the field are going to know what's on that reel they're not going to be surprises they're going to know uh, however you created them it's what they're going to get and you're going to provide ways for them to handle those reels it's a lot less effort than they've been doing today okay so we're going to do a little exercise here uh, and to kind of to demonstrate. And uh, we're going to call this Project X. This is an electrical job here that we're involved in. And, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, critical power jobs, data centers and stuff, they go by these uh, fake names. So we'll call it Project X. This is our data center. It's Project X. And this on the right here, this, this picture is our feeder. This is part of a feeder schedule. OK, now we all know feeder schedules on the job is when a contractor gets that job, they take it and they start looking at all these feeders and they create this feeder schedule. That's got many times they'll designate it feeder number one, feeder number two and so forth. They'll designate these feeders, whatever makes sense to them for their job. And you have the from and to. From is where is the source source to load from is with a panel board to a, a bus bar or a motor control center to a motor, whatever it is, you'll have the number of sets and the length. And then you're going to know what the color combination is for that feeder. Okay. Now feeder schedules come in many forms. Uh, they can be as simple as two or three feeders written on the back of a piece of cardboard. It can be as complex as a large project where you've got a very, very in-depth spreadsheet with pages and pages and pages and pages of feeders to put together. So you're going to get these things in many forms, but the, the, the overlying message here is you got to have a feeder schedule to start. You got to have something that says, what am I feeding? My sizes, my colors, the basic stuff. Where am I starting? Where's my source? Where am I going to? Where is my load? Okay. When we can do that, then we can start putting these together into reels. So let's take just a quick look at what we have here. Uh, we've got six feeders. One, two, three four, five, and six. These are six feeders. If we did this the old way, like we did in the past with black wire and reels, you'd end up with as many as 22, maybe 20 reels, depending on how you do this. So think about this, managing 20 or 22 reels on a job site and the time that that takes to do that. Well, what we're going to do instead is we're going to take all this wire and we're going to parallel it and stack it on one reel. Okay. So I've got six feeders, and I'm going to go from as many as 22 reels down to one reel. Uh, we're going to put pre-installed simple pulling heads on this wire. Uh, we're going to put these pulls in the correct sequence because we've asked, and uh, we've made notes out here in the comments. Here's the pull sequence. The contractor says, I want to pull circuit number four first. I want to pull circuit number two next. I want to pull circuit number three next. Circuit number one last. So on this, this, this group of wires here, we've, we've, we've found out the sequence that we're going to pull in. And that's very important. If you're pulling in a piece of switch gear, uh, as an example, you may have conduits that are toward the back of the switch gear. 
Well, I want to pull those first because if I pull the ones in the front of the switch gear, well, I'm blocking myself. So it's very important to be able to determine the order you want to pull these in, and we're going to stack them on that reel in the order. So up here at the top, you see these first four feeders. They come from the same panel, a little UDP B1, okay? And you see they're feeding some bus duck on the project. Here's bus B1, bus B2, B3, B4, and so forth. The last two feeders are some mechanical feeders that, that originate from two different bores but feed two different loads, okay? These up here you see are two, uh, 208 volt col colors, black, red, white, blue with a green ground. These two at the bottom are brown, purple, yellow, gray, and green. And you see purples used a lot in, in, in data centers, you know, critical power projects. Many times the critical power will have purple. So you can build these in the right colors. Like again, I said any color, any size, the lengths you want, and you see all these are varying lengths on these on these reels. Okay, so let's make sure that makes sense to you. So I've got six circuits. Instead of 20 or 22 reels, I'm gonna go with parallel in the stacks on one reel and put them in the order I want. All right, so what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, we're going to step out of our presentation, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you. Uh, let's see here. Let me find it right quick. Let's go with screen. No, uh, screen one. Well, we'll go with screen two here. And uh, I'm going to share the screen. And up here on the screen. We're going to look at our tool that we're going to use to to configure these reels. So I would ask uh, Joe or Elizabeth if you see in the configurator screen. I can see it, Johnny. Awesome. Looks okay. Good. This is our Southwire Configurator Plus. This is our web-based tool. If you've got an internet connection, you can get onto this this tool to be able to build your reels and slice and dice these reels like we 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 want to do. Okay. Today's not a class on how to use a configurator, but but rather to show you what we can do with it and how you plan these reels. And we have we're going to have classes coming up that are going to show you how to use this tool. So here's what we want to do. Uh, when I first get in here, we would create a project and we'd name our project, which is fine. But I've already created our project X here. Okay, so I'm going to go in project X and I've created some jobs within within this project. You know, jobs could be releases. I could have wire release number one, wire release number two, uh, depending on when I want them. So uh, I've got release three built here, already done for us from our uh, feeder schedule. But let's just create a job here and show you how this works. So if I wanted to create a job in here, and maybe this was, uh, let's call this release number four, okay? Maybe this is the fourth release. And, you know, I've got information I can do here. Again, I'm not going to show you all about this, but I just want to show you that I can now create that wire release. There's release number four. Okay. And from here, I can now create, uh, I can go into this release and I can start creating circuits in here. So I'm going to show you quickly how we would create these circuits. Okay. From our spreadsheet, we had four, the first four feeders are the same. They're all black, red, white. Um, green and their 600 MCM. So let's make these four reels. We said from was UDP B1. Destination is bus uh, B1. But for destination here, I'm going to say, let's just call it bus B1 for right now. Okay. It's copper THHN wire. Our length on our first feeder was 75 feet. So let's put that in and number of conductors was four. We have four conductors. What size are they? They are 600 MCM. And what color scheme did I have? Well, I have black, red, white, black, black, red, blue, white. So I'm going to go here, pre-select black, red, blue, white. Okay. So there I've got my phase conductors. How about my ground? So let's go down here and pick our ground. It's going to be a copper ground. And we said this particular feeder has a number three ground. Okay. Uh-oh. I can't select a number three. Why is that? Because I can't parallel a number three wire on the same reel as my phase conductors. So 
we're going to put the grounds on a separate reel. So the, the phase conductors, as I said, are all going to be on run reel. But a lot of times, and typically you're going to see this, we're going to put the grounds on a separate reel just to make our life easy. Okay. Once I do that, and, and we said we had a number three ground, there we go. And we're ready to go. And we save it. And we just created all of those. Now, what I want to do here is go to all these and I'm going to auto assign. So it put it on reels on a reel for me. Okay. Now I can go here and I'm not going to go through all these, but I can say, here was my first one is bus B1. I'm going to grab those two. You see, there's my phase conductors and there's my ground. And let's kind of change the description on this to UD. Excuse me. Let's say this is feeder number one to bus B1. Okay, and we're going to confirm that. So there we go. The second feeder, we're going to go here and select it. Oops. Phase conductors in the ground. And I'm going to edit that. And this is going to be circuit number two to, to uh, bus B2. Now, this one is a different length. It's a little bit longer. It's 87 feet long. So I'm going to make that change and confirm it. So there you go. So as you see here, I've gone through and I can call these reels, whatever I want to call them. I can name them. I can edit them, anything I want to do with them and create it. So this is how you would create the circuits and the grounds in this job. And then once we do that, we'll go over and configure it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Project X and this release three, I've already created it. So I'm going to go into release number three here. And you see here, I've built all those feeders that we had in our spreadsheet. There's our UDP feeders, and here's our mechanical feeders. So there's all six feeders already created. I've gone through and, and changed the lengths to reflect the actual lengths, and the sizes are here. Uh, we've named the reels release number three, so when they come out to the job, the, the, the electricians know what release is on it. All right. So let's configure this job. Okay. Now, circuits on a reel. You see here. We already have put these circuits on a reel. This is release number three. Okay. Here's release number three grounds. These are these are these circuits here. We see our available circuits. We don't have any. So let's go back here to our project X. And I didn't let's see here. Here we go. So let's take these two feeders. We haven't put those on a reel yet. So let's, uh, uh, yeah, we have, sorry. Okay, where are my reels? I apologize here, when you do something live, you can always have things that you don't expect. All right, here we go. Mechanical A, mechanical B. All right, so let's go with what we have. Here's, here's our reel. This is our first release, number one right here, okay? Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so what we've done here, here's my release three phase reel. You see here, I've got uh, all these feeders on here, and here's my grounds down here. So I've got two reels. I have loaded all these feeders on one reel. Now, it's important to see here that the contractor told me the order that they want to pull all these feeders, okay? So he said we wanted to pull feeder number one first. Here it is, bus number one. Now, you see here, these things are color-coded. So the green feeder, which is this one, is on the outside of the reel. That means that's the first one I'm going to pull. So we're in good shape there. He wanted to pull, I'm sorry, he, his sequence, he wants to pull number four first. So here was number four. Let's move it down here. Okay. So that one's on top. He wants to pull number two second. Let's move it down. He wants to pull number three next. There we go. And number one last. So there's those, those pulls on that reel and the order he wants. Now, you notice we stack these other two feeders, mechanical feeders, on the same reel. 
And the order here is six and five. So let's take number six, put it here. So there we go. So now you see this reel is built exactly like you wanted it. The sequence is on there. All these feeders are on one reel. And you'll see here this reel weighs 3,400 pounds. It's a four foot tall, 48 inch by 32 wide. Okay. So we went from 2022 20, reels to one reel that's four foot wide, four foot tall by 32 wide. And we're ready to do this. Now, our grounds, uh, you'll notice here that on our mechanical bees, these mechanical feeds, we were able to put the ground wire on with phase conductors. Okay. So we put them there. On our bigger feeders, we did. And those are stacked up on this ground reel. So let's stack these in the same sequence that our phase conductors are. So he said he wanted number four to be the first one that was pulled off. He wanted number two to be the second one, which is there it is. He wants number three, which is there it is, and number one. So we have those in the same correct order as the phase conductors coming off that reel. Now, maybe mechanical BNA, maybe he wants those last. So let's slide these down to. The, to the bottom, maybe he wants to pull these last. It doesn't matter because they have their, their ground on it. Uh, so there we go. So now he'd be pulling out these feeders and done. Okay, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of how you, you take all these reels, you know what you've got, and you stack them on one. Okay, now let's go back to release three. And now that we've done this, let's download a bill of materials. So here you go. You now have a PDF. You can share with your guy in the field. You can share with your purchasing agent. You can share with a uh, distributor, whomever needs this. Here's our project X, release number three. Here's the real name, release number three. Here's your size and your weight of that reel. So you know what that reel weighs. Here are the pulls that are on that reel. Pull one of six. The first one's 105 feet from the mechanical to the load it's feeding. Your wire, the sizes, and the colors. Here's pull number two off of that reel. Pull number three and so forth. So you know exactly what you have on that reel. Here's pull five. There's our two mechanical uh, feeds. Uh, excuse me. Down here. Uh, sorry, here we go. Mechanical I ended up this up top. Here's our mechanical feeds. Here's the rest of them. So now you know exactly what's on that reel. You scroll on down here. You also have information about all the wire, all the lengths. You can go through and review it and make sure you got it correctly. If you need a summary of the total amount of wire and the weight of that wire that you're dealing with, you have it. Uh, and, and some other summary information of the number of footage. So you can go down through here pretty quickly and say, well, how many feet of wire did I have? 2,552. I can bounce that off my feeder schedule and make sure that matches and to verify that I got it right, okay? So this is what you're gonna have. I wanted to give you an overview of this, uh, why this is important and, and, and to understand what parallels and stacks are. So with that, I'm going to stop right here and uh, we're gonna stop our share and we're gonna open this up for some questions. Hey, Johnny, so far, so far, no questions have come in through the chat, but we'll give people a minute to type it up. Um, you know, like you were saying earlier, this is really just about changing, changing your way of thinking. So, you know, we've been getting parallel reels on jobs since probably late 90s. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we were out on a job uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and the guy wasn't parallel on the reels. He just ordered master reels of black 500,000, right? Um, which leads to a lot of complications. One is one is that setup. Two is, you know, once you start to do that stack and you're you're prefiguring and taking that little bit of time up front to figure out the lengths, you kind of avoid most most electricians don't want to be the guy that cut the wire short. Yep. So when you're pulling off a master reel, you pull it and it's like, oh, let's wrap it around the cabinet twice. <laughs> you know, even though the lugs might be at the bottom of the panel, and then you start to get down towards that bottom of the reel, and you're left with not enough to do the last run. Um, you know, so by having those runs predefined, you, you take some of that opportunity uh, for, for field revision out of the way. And that, that's just really right there as a big way to eliminate waste on that job site. That's true, Joe. You're eliminating a lot of waste. 
this comes back to planning. You know, the thing about it, if you, you hit the ground running and order your wire, if you start with a plan up front, uh, like Joe said, you're going to eliminate all that waste. You're going to save yourself a lot of effort. But has to start with a plan, folks. That's the paradigm shift in our industry. We got to start early. And I would say a, a real, it, it can be intimidating when you look at this if, if it's not something you have been doing. A real easy point of, of entry is on a lot of jobs, you know, you have you have one piece of gear feeding, you know, feeding some equipment and you have multiple, you have a couple parallel runs on it. You know, those runs are going to be the same length. They're going to be the same sizes. They're going to be everything about them is the same. We'll start with that and then see what it's like to only set up one reel for those three or four poles instead of, even if you're parallel to having to set up four. And then you can kind of build from there and go, okay, now this really works. Okay. Let's look at all the pipes coming out of this piece of equipment. Um, and just, Kind of as you gain confidence with that, you're going to get to that point where that contractor had the confidence to order 17 runs on one on one reel. Yeah, and and uh, you know we have a lot of resources out in the field. We have our field South Park field folks that are our solutions professionals out that can come help work with you on your job and help you plan this out. Our distributors around the country know how to do this. Uh, they can help you with this plan. So don't feel like the things I just showed you, you're on your own trying to do this as a contractor. You've got help and support from Southwire, uh, which is really what sets us apart. We're going to help you make that plan. But uh, again, you got to get involved early. That's the key. All right. We still haven't seen any questions come through the chat, Johnny. All right. Well, uh, if you if seen anything that you think would help you on your job, if you have a job coming up that you see uh, an opportunity to take care of, to take advantage of stacks and parallels, contact your Southwire distributor, contact Southwire uh, support and, uh, folks, and let's let's help you make a very successful job.